can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten buffalo bulls right in front of us, looking particularly relaxed on this windy winter's afternoon. It's lovely and warm out here, considering that it is right in the middle of our winter, with the buffalo taking advantage of all of the sun that is shining down before the temperature starts to drop and it gets cool once again. Now they may look like cows, but you definitely shouldn't confuse them with them. Buffalo is a very wild, very interesting animal. And these groups of males, these are all boys, all of these buffalo bulls, these groups of males can actually be quite grumpy when they want to be. Especially if they find that their personal space is being interrupted by somebody else. And Bella, welcome to the Sunset Safari. You were wondering about how we're safe in these safari vehicles without being attacked since it's nice and open. Well, the answer is the biggest way that we make sure that we're safe is to always respect the animals, to always remember that they are wild animals and to constantly be watching what they're doing. Luckily for us, most of the animals out here have grown up from the moment they are born until where, whatever age they happen to be. They've grown up with safari vehicles wandering about, driving past them, and they basically ignore us like we're not even there, like we're not an important part of our, their day. Sometimes baby elephants come up and play with the vehicle, try and scare the vehicle away, but they are just playing. So it's very important for us to remember that even though we know the animals and we know that they're comfortable with us, make sure that we never take that for granted. So we're always watching what they do. And speaking of that, and speaking of watching animals, there is a big animal lying in the dam itself. And if we have a closer look, I know he's hidden behind some logs, but he's difficult to see, but that is a hippo. Now, when I first drove up here, I was a little bit closer to the water hole itself and he immediately got up and started me showing me signs that he's uncomfortable with me. Now, I don't know whether he would have charged at us or whether he would actually have run away from the vehicle. But either way, it's important that we read those animals' body languages, body language, and that we recognize the message that we're giving them or that they're giving us. Since we are in their home, not the other way around, so I just wanted to give him plenty of space. And of course, he is, <coughs> he is close to 4,000 pounds with huge canine in teeth, modified teeth that could slice through anything. It's important to remember that I've got to give him plenty of space. They're also very, very fast. Now, Hannah, you were wondering, since Brent had buffalo at the water hole, and I've got a buffalo here at my water hole. Why is it that the buffalo are always at water? And the answer is buffalo are what's known as water dependent animals. What that means is that they need to drink at least once a day in order to survive. So a buffalo doesn't do well in a desert situation. They're adapted to being in places where there is a permanent water supply. And in this case, there's not very much of that around. But especially these old bulls like to go and lie in the mud. And Drew, you were wondering what do buffalo eat? The answer is buffalo only really eat grass. And at the moment, there's not much grass either. We're going into our winter season, into our dry season. And it's also a drought, which means that there's not too much in the way of food for all these buffalo. And they have to move and cover huge distances to eat the grass that they need to survive.